Yo, what's up friends? Welcome back to Angel in Tech. Today we're going to be doing a fun mini project. We're going to be using the ISS API where we can find the current people on board the ISS as well as um, which crafts are in space right now as well as determining the location of the ISS. My original plan was to determine when the ISS will pass the state you, you're at or the state you'd like to see. However, the ISS took that portion of the API out and replaced it with the, the exact location, um, which is fine. We work around it, but we're going to be using three APIs, the ISS for determining the current location, the current astronauts, along with the craft name. And we're going to be using this one right here to determine the location of the ISS based on what it returns. Um, we're going to be using JSON mainly. We're going to be using pandas to create a data frame just so we can read the uh, the JSON data format better. Um, but yeah, subscribe, comment, like, um, follow me on Twitter, and follow the GitHub where you can find this awesome mini project. But with that being said, let's get started. Cool. So let's get started. So we're going to be using these different libraries. We're going to be using request to get the status code of these APIs, make sure we can access them. JSON, um, we're going to be using it to read the data that's being passed from these websites. Datetime, um, I don't remember if, we, if we're going to be using it for this, um, or we will, because we're going to be parsing the time because it comes as a timestamp and it's not legible right away for us humans. Um, we're gonna be using pandas, we're gonna be using a data frame um, to put all the information in, and we're gonna be using parse. This is gonna be used to create uh, parameters that we're passing in to the location API where it's gonna be a query um, telling them, telling exactly what we're gonna be passing. Um, so first we're gonna be setting the attributes here. We're just gonna be setting the APIs that we're using uh, in this case a URL. We're going to be implementing check URL stat um, as we're passing in the URL that we're using and we're going to want to make sure that we get a status code of 200, make sure we can access the information. JSON format, this is just to print JSON in a, uh, in a beautiful way so you can read it and it's legible. It's not necessary for you to do it but it's just good to see. Um, create data frame ISS astro info, this is all for astronauts. And then this is this one right here gets us the current people and um, this gets us the current crafts and then we're going to create a data frame iss location info so we're going to get all the information for where it's located currently and then we're going to get the current iss location um so when we this one right here gets all the information this one right here will be getting the just what we actually want so not all the JSON that's being passed and then we'll, but we'll take a look at this as well and then the f last part is get ISS location so this is for us to know exactly where it's at um, but yeah these are the functions that we're going to be implementing um, if you do have any questions let me know in the comments and yeah let's start coding all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be setting the attributes and like I said this takes in the URL takes in three different APIs that we're going to be using um, and it goes as follow we're going to be doing URL current location so this is this tells us where the ISS is currently at um, the URL current astros this tells us exactly where the astronauts are and a URL locator this is just an online reverse geolocation API that I found online. So it's not an actual API, it's a website, but you can manipulate the URL to create your own query and you can determine where it's at. So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, the first thing we're going to do is implement check URL stat. So right away, URL stat is equal to RQ, so request dot get, and we're passing in the URL plus any parameters that we decide. So right now parameters is an option optional. Um, you don't have to pass anything in. 
Um, but as you will see in down here, we will create a parameter for this URL locator and we will pass those in. So now we're going to implement a try and get clause. So try if URL uh, stat dot status code. So we want to make sure that the status code is 200 equals 200. We're going to set, we're going to get all the JSON info. So JSON info is equal to URL stat. So right now URL stat is what the, the page has, all the information on there. And we're going to do call dot JSON um, like this. But before I go, I gotta run this. And don't worry about this. You shouldn't get um, a warning. This is, I have to update my Anaconda version. So we're good on that. Uh, okay, we do that. And then what we do, what we want to do is return JSON info. So, like I said, if the status code is 200 and we're good to go, then just return it. So, and then we're going to do an accept clause. Accept. And this is called exception as E, and we're going to raise E. So if there is an error, it's going to tell us what the error is. Um, we can run this and test it out. It's equal, double equals. Okay, cool. So now we run this and it returns none. Okay, that's fine. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm, let me see, let me see. Cool. Uh, we can call that as well. We can call it up here. We can do print iss dot and just put in our function. And then we'll copy this URL. Um, you could do one of the two. It's up to you. And cool. So we get all the data as JSON, which we'll end up parsing here in a bit. Our next function we're implementing is JSON format. And like I said, this function is to beautify what we just saw right here. So instead of reading like this, it's more legible. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a variable called txt equals json dot dumps. And what this does is it puts all the JSON info right and then we're going to sort by keys and we're going to equal to true and we're going to indent um we'll do two and then we're going to return txt so this json info is what's returned here so if the url stat is 200 we're going to get the json data from the u from the website and we're going to return that information so right here is being passed in and we're just going to return txt. So that's what this does. We're passing in the JSON info from this function into JSON format so we can see it in a legible way. So we can go ahead and comment this one out. Awesome. So there it's, we're able to read it better. So we get a message equals success, meaning we're able to access it. We get the number of people in the ISS and then we get people and it tells us everybody that's on there and the craft name and that's exactly what we wanted to do and the same thing goes with another with the other url um about where it, it currently is we can copy and paste that into here and it tells us the position longitude lati latitude and longitude message and timestamp and this is what i was talking about the timestamp where we're going to be using date time to convert it into something that we can read. All right, our next function is to create the ISS Astro Info. So now that we know that we can access the information from the API, we want to be able to get the information. So here, uh, let's go back and put in the Astro Info. Cool. So we're going to want to get this key people and it holds a, va uh, holds a list of different dictionary names. Um, and that's exactly what we want. So we're going to want to do the following. We're going to want to get first the information. 
So we can just call this ISS info is equal to self dot check URL um, stat and we're passing in self dot URL current and we're gonna be passing in Astros so we're gonna want the astronauts all right and then after we get that we're gonna want to say if if this is true right if it's 200 is gonna return this so if ISS does return something um, we're gonna go into this conditional statement and we're gonna set people equal to ISS info people so like I said if the UR ch if checking the URL returns the information we're gonna go into this loop and we're just gonna want to get the values that we see under people um, that's all we want for that and then after that we're gonna create a data frame DF is equal to PD dot data frame dot from dict so the reason we're doing from dict is because people is contains dictionaries and it's we're going to be able to format it better and then we're going to pass in the data people and we're going to orient them into columns and then we're just going to return the data frame so now we see this right here name and craft cool right so that gives us all the information but like I said we just want the current people we don't want all the information we we don't want the craft name and all of that so what we can do is say DF is equal to self the get <clears throat> sorry self dot create df oh, we can just tab it this one right here and we're not passing it into anything and then we can just say we're going to create a copy called people is equal to df dot copy and then we're going to say df people and we're going to want to get we're going to create a new column called current current astronauts in a space and you can name this whatever you'd like you don't have to name it and we're gonna want to get the name of the uh, people and then we can do DF people and we're gonna want to drop the column names um, the ones that came that we don't want so right now our original Data frame is name and crafts. We're going to want to drop name and crafts since we created a new column with just the current astronauts in space. So we could do name and crafts. And we're going to want to do this in, in place is equal to true. And then we just return DF people. So now we run this. Ooh, I messed up somewhere. Crafts not. Hmm, where did I mess up? I think it's just called craft. <laughs> not crafts. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So we have current astronauts in space. And then our original data frame was like this. So that's that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to see the current people or current astronauts in space. And here we have them, which is really cool. And now the next goal is to get current crafts. So similar to up here, um, we're gonna we're gonna go, we're gonna do the exact same thing, um, but instead of having people, we're gonna be having the crafts. So you don't have to name it people. You can name it DF craft, and then instead of current astronauts, we're can name it crafts in space and then or actually in, we could just name it crafts since we saw that there was already two um, rename this and drop the original we're gonna drop the name and we're gonna drop craft in place true but 
along with this, we're also going to want to group by so that way it doesn't return a list of um, so many. Uh, so we know that there's 10 people right now, right? And there's all this, right? If we just looked at the craft section, we see that there's seven ISS and three Tiangong. Um, excuse me for my mispronunciation. <laughs> so instead of having the, it return seven of these and three of these, we just want to group it and return um, the craft names and how many of them are there, the count. So we can just run that. Oops. Oh my. Cool. Hopefully no errors. And there is an error. Crafts. Right, because I named it lowercase. Um column not found name. Hmm. All right here. Oh, name, 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 name. Oh, where am I messing up? Oh, it's because I drop it. All right, we don't have to drop it then. I misspoke. So right here, crafts, ISS and Tiangong, they're seven and three. So that's exactly what we want. So if somebody just were to call um, current crafts, they, they can get that, so. <laughs> that's exactly it. and no you don't have to drop the column names um, because if you drop the column names before that there's nothing to group them by and to count um, find the count so do not drop this cool so now our next goal is to get the current ISS location the, what we're gonna do is use our next API so we can just call this again Oh, not plus location info is equal to self dot and remember what we called it right here check URL stat check URL stat and we're passing in self dot this one right here current location mm -mm -mm. There is no parameters going in this one, so we can just do that. Cool. So now if ISS loc info, again, if it returns status code of 200, then it's going to return the page. So if, if it does that, we're going to go into this conditional and same format as before. We're going to want to get the location data. So from the JSON format. And we do this by calling our where it's located, the key. And then what we're going to do, we're going to want to do time is equal to ISS loc info timestamp. So like I said earlier, when we saw this, the timestamp was just a bunch of numbers and we can't tell exactly where it's located. I mean, what time it is. So we can fix that by doing this and then we can convert it from timestamp so we can call this timestamp is equal to DT so date time from timestamp and pass in the value and then we can create a data frame that holds this information and again from dict since we're working with dictionary values um, and we're going to pass in an array and we're going to pass in location and then we're going to create a new column and we're going to call this timestamp you don't have to um, and then we're going to pass in the value that we got from timestamp and then we can return the data frame Where is it? Where is it? Hmm, I don't have it on here. Oh, right here. We have the latitude and longitude, and timestamp gives us the current date and the current time of where this is located, which is really cool.
All right, now we want to get the current ISS location. And this is going to be used to pass in, we're going to create um, a parameter here where we're passing in format to um, to this URL. Uh, I'll explain that here in a bit. Awesome. So as I was saying, first we're going to want to get the status of the URL. So um, actually we already got that from here. So we're going to want to get this information so we can pass into our next uh, URL. So we want to get self. We want to get the data frame from our previous function. Uh, okay, we're going to call this df ISS location info. Okay, now now we're going to want to do a couple different things. We're going to get the latitude, longitude for this. So we can say lat is equal to df and then we know that it has latitude in here and then long is equal to df longitude and now we're going to want to set up our parameters in a dictionary format so parameters is equal to this so our first par parameter that we're going to pass in is the format for the URL so and this is going to be JSON next we're going to pass in the latitude Next, we're going to want to pass in the longitude. And actually, it doesn't take long, it takes lawn. So we can do that. And then um, zoom is how close and precise you want to see the location. And this, we can just say 18. And then the address details is one, we want everything possible that's there. So we can just pass in the value of one. Cool. And now we're going to be using the library called parse. And here we're going to be calling, we're going to set up a new parameter and we're going to call the, we're going to set up an F string as well. So that way we can pass it in and we're going to set up a query and then we're passing in the parameter. So parse dot URL encode. And then here we're passing in the dictionary that we set up params like that and it should create our new query string that can then be added into um, the URL mentioned above so now the way we can do this is say info is equal to self dot check URL stat and we're passing in self dot URL locator that will be found and then we're going to pass in the new parameters cool and then we can return info but before that i want to show you what the um, what the parameters looks like so we can do here let me do this return new param Mm -mm. new params not param excuse me there we go so this is the new this is how it looks encoded which is exactly what we want so we're going to pass that in into here so we should be able to get information um currently there is none hmm let me think do 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 hmm currently returns none all right Let me see again. New params, address, details, zoom, launch, 
let oh I see why because we're not actually passing in the values for that so it doesn't know where it's at so we got to <laughs> specify because if we see above we're going to pass in value at index 0 and then value at index 1 <laughs> so we got to remember that so if I do this again and I put in new params Mm, what's the error this time? One. One is not in range. Because they're all both at zero. That's why. Not at one. Both at zero. Cool. So this is a new format. This is the query that's going to be added as a parameter that's being passed into our check URL stat up here parameters is replaced by that query string and it's going to be added here and it's going to be passed into request.get to check the status it's going to be added here as query blah 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 of what we put so it's exactly what we want but instead of the new params we want the information and we pass in the information and we get error unable to geocode so what this means took me a little bit to figure it out is that Currently, the ISS is hovering over somewhere unexpected um, that this API can't figure out and can't find. So going off of that, there's other APIs like the Google APIs that you can use for reverse um, geo coding as well. Um, you would have to sign up for that, get an API key, but I didn't want you to go through the hassle for this mini project and I didn't want to do that. There's also another, I think there's like two other Python libraries that you can also install in your local machine and work from that to reverse geo locate um, certain places. But honestly, this probably is the fastest way just to get an idea of how to manipulate a URL and add parameters and query strings. So in this function right here get ISS location that's where we're going to be handling that information um, that code so cool so we're going to get the information from this function right here get current ISS location we're going to set a copy and then now okay if address so this is where it contains the location of what we want is not in our data frame th then we're going to return this currently hovering over unknown territory according to API else if if this is not true we're going to go in here get the address location now if the country is not in DF we're going to return the this right here and this will help us figure out where where it is if country is available then we're going to return the country so we can do that so yeah right now it's currently hovering over unknown territory which is expected um it does move pretty fast so we don't have to necessarily worry that it's going to be like that all the time we can find places where it is so overall our main our main concept of what we wanted to do is get the current astronauts in space, the craft, and the location. But this should change every time we run it. Give it like five minutes and it'll run and we'll be able to figure out where it's at. But that's it for this mini project. I hope you had fun learning about working with APIs, manipulating a URL, creating uh, query using parse.url and code, creating data frame from JSON information and JSON formats. Um, we also learned how to beautify JSON so that way it's legible and it's easier to read. And we also learned about request.get to make sure that you can access the information on a web page. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. Um, subscribe, like, comment. Follow me on Twitter at IamAngelSH. Also follow the GitHub where a lot of these awesome projects are posted. I will include a MyBinder uh, link where you can practice this on your own as you're hearing this tutorial. Um, if not, you can also download this and 
you know, try it on your own. You can create a bunch of different fun things using this information, but it's all up to you. Maybe you can find a different way to handle these uh, APIs than I did. But yeah, that's it for this video. Um, like I said, comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.